Well, welcome back everyone. In my last video I sort of hinted that I was looking to build a new 3D printer. Uh, that printer is going to be a Hypercube Evolution or my version of it. Uh, and today I just want to talk a little bit about the thought process involved in uh, getting started on the printer. So let's take a look at it now. Oh hi everyone, well here we are on the Hypercube Evolution page on Thingiverse. I will put a link down below for this. You'll notice that there are two versions of the Hypercube Evolution. There's a single Z-axis version and there's a dual Z-axis version. Now in one of uh, Scott3D's uh, videos, which I'll also put a link to that down below, he mentioned that the single z access version did have some wobble in the bed so i plan on building the dual z access version i figure if i'm going to all this trouble then i may as well build the version that doesn't have any issues so if you haven't used thingiverse before there are a wealth of a 3d printing designs on thingiverse if i want to build something generally the first thing i will do is go and have a look on thingiverse and see if there is something there maybe as a starting point or something that's complete and scott 3d has basically published all of the design the stl files and everything for this printer on to thingiverse which is absolutely wonderful if we take a look down through the page here and you'll see that there's a bit of a summary of the actual printer and what his design goals were and a link to the Facebook group as well which has all sorts of information on it and you certainly need to be a member of that if you're going to build one of these things and as we scroll down further you'll see there's a bill of materials now I ordered my bits and pieces a little bit differently rather than just going to all these individual links and I'm not too sure if they all still work but I ordered the frame and a lot of the fixings and fasteners as a kit and then looked at ordering the motors and the belts and pulleys and uh, linear bearings and everything like that separately and I still haven't ordered all the bits and pieces I wanted to see how it went together before I ordered some of the other parts I found that when I ordered it, I was sort of seeing things turn up in a one to two week period from China. So, you know, it's not a huge lead time to wait anyway. So the other little bits and pieces or quite large bits and pieces in some respects that I'll be ordering hopefully won't to take too long to turn up. So, as I say, there is a bill of materials here, which is quite handy. If we scroll back up to the top of the page here and you'll see the thing files here and if we click on that link you'll see here are all the actual files that Scott has published. So you can download the whole lot which is exactly what I did. Now one thing that is included in those files is a really handy Excel spreadsheet that Scott 3D put together to help with um, determining the lengths of shafts and extrusions and things like that if you want to build a different sized printer. So basically I've actually I should mention I'm showing this on my Mac because that's where I do all my video editing. This spreadsheet it doesn't play well on Mac. Make these adjustments on a Windows PC you can certainly view it on a Mac after you've saved but, but there's some macros there that just, it doesn't play nice. But anyway, basically just set the build volume that you want, build platform and some other settings that are sort of described over here and whether you want a dual or a single axis, uh, select the shaft types that you want and it will give you a printout down here of the quantities and lengths of the extrusions and shafts that you need and 
on the next tab across on this print list it gives you a list of all the STLs that you need to print out and the quantities which is great. I guess one thing I should mention, I've actually built a 300 by 300 by 300 build volume printer, or that's what I am building. However, I've actually ordered the upright extrusions 100 millimeters longer than specified here because I want to put all of the electronics and bits and pieces in the bottom of the printer rather than mount it on the back of it just to keep it looking a lot tidier and everything. So I've essentially just kept all of these uh, lengths the same apart from the Z extrusions where they were ordered an extra 100 mil longer. I've, some of the bits have actually arrived and I've actually started putting things together so I wanted to get this video out before I actually get some, some build videos out where things are actually going together. But what I did find was I was having some troubles just figuring out the way things mount up or distances between extrusions and things like that. So what I did, I imported the design files into Fusion 360 so that I could start taking some measurements a little bit easier. So in Fusion, so I can take a measurement between that top element there maybe and um, maybe I want to know you know to the top of that and over here I can read off just simply it's 360 millimeters from the top of the printer to the top of this particular extrusion and that in fact is actually the measurement that I did want to actually grab look the other reason I wanted to get things into fusion is just looking at how you know, some of these bits and pieces bolt up onto the frame is made a whole lot easier if we can uh, just look at it in 3D space like this. So um, I think this should be uh, quite helpful indeed. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to cover off on what I'm planning to build before I actually start putting up some build videos. So cheers for now. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.